Hockey Inside Out, presented to you by the Montreal Gazette. Welcome to the Hockey Inside Out Show. I'm Montreal Gazette Sports Editor Stu Cowan, joined today by regulars Chris Nyland, Jack Todd, and Jessica Rusnak from TSN Radio 690. Uh, Chris, we had a poll on the HAO site about Michel Terry asking fans if they have confidence in him as a coach. It's almost split 50-50. What are your thoughts? I, uh, God, I don't know. I think I'm on the 50 side. <laughs> <laughs> Is that diplomatic <laughs> enough? Um, you, you know, listen... It, it, They've done well, okay? I think this team is better than they're showing. I think this team has made him look good. Listen, I don't think they've ever get out of their structure of playing the trap game or dump and chase game. Uh, and it certainly shows to me on the power play if it's struggled from the beginning of the year, okay, you make some adjustments and maybe it gets better. But at this point in the season, when the power play is still where it is, dismal as it is, that could win them games. It could have made a big difference in the Tampa game the other night. No. Some of it's on the guys, but at some point, you've got to change something up. Personnel or system on the power play. I, I haven't seen it, and it's so unsuccessful that it's lost them a, quite a few games. It's made a difference in quite a few games, and um, that's on the coaching staff. And he's the head coach, and I believe that he has to do something there to try and turn that thing around. You wrote a column, Jack, about Terry and saying that you know, he probably does deserve a little more respect. Yeah, it's hard to argue with the record. And as a journalist, you know, I think you have to be a little bit cautious. Uh, when a guy's had his team on top of the league three straight years, especially after the horse spit years they had before that, I covered all those bad years, you know, when Xavier Dalil was playing on the second <laughs> line and, you know, there was no depth and completely confused approach and you didn't know from one day to the next what was going to happen. I don't like coaching turnover because, you know, you, you tend to get more of the same, you get a little bump up and then you go back to the same. All that said, there are some things that have to be fixed, and like Mr. Nyland said, power play is number one. Go ahead. The only thing I would say is I, I would compare the end of this season right now. Of course, there's still time to play, but if they don't necessarily turn it around to the lockout shortened season when they went into the playoffs not playing their best hockey, ended up getting bounced in the first round to the Ottawa Senators. Mind you, they did have some injuries, but I'm starting to see some similarities towards that season that if you don't go into the playoffs feeling confident, being where your game needs to be, it can maybe play a toll with you once you get to the postseason. Now they're tied for first place overall in the NHL after beating uh, Florida, Chris. Apart from the power play, what are, what are other concerns you have going forward? With this team, um, obviously scoring goals is, is one of the things. You know, early on they seemed to be doing good five-on-five five scoring goals. They were getting enough goals and price, obviously, closing the door like he has. Um, that, that's the big concern, I guess. And, um, you know, they, they got to remember to play physical. You know, I, I like Dale Weiss, but he's got to come to play every night. You know, the other night in Tampa Bay, he had no hits. You know, guys got to play physical and collectively as a team. My concern with them is around the net, too. I don't think they're tough enough. I saw last night, every time a Canadian player went around that goaltender, they were pushed, they were mugged. It happens down our end of the rink, and it's like, okay, no problem. No one pushes. There's no pushback in front of the net. There's no, like, uh, no one's scared to go to the net against the Canadians, and I, I worry down low, below the dots. How many shots last night? 45? Yeah, well, they were outshot in the third period, Jack. 21 to 4. Another case of sitting on the lead? I, th I think it was partly sitting on the lead. I think Tampa, the, to come back like they did in Tampa, was took a lot out of them. You know, it looked like uh, when, you know, I used to run the 400 meters in track, and at 300 meters I would always die because that's when we said, we said the elephant falls on you. You know, it looked like the elephant fell on him. It was just like the legs just went. Is that when and you started writing? <laughs> <laughs> I could still run away from you over 400 meters. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mark Bergeron was interviewed uh, was interviewed by Strombo, uh, just, and he was talking about how just making the playoffs in today's NHL really is an accomplishment with the parity that they have. Talking about you know, teams like the Kings and the Bruins might not be there. I think maybe Canadians fans forget that sometimes. It is that this league is so competitive and there's so much turnover from year after year that making the playoffs, if you look at the teams that are going to make it this year compared to the ones last year, like you said, you know, Boston's on the bubble, LA's on the bubble, that 
you would never have guessed this at this time last year that these would be teams struggling to get in. So I think that is something to remember that making the playoffs is an accomplishment. And then once that happens, anyone has the possibility to do it. Look at last year, L.A. I don't think anyone would have expected L.A. to win so many Game 7s and go on to win a cup. And the parity in the league last year, they're between first place in the East and ninth in the East, not making the playoffs with 17 points. It's just over one win a month, really. So it really is tight. One thing for the Canadians, though, Chris, they have, not, they have nine players under the age of 25 right now. Uh, Dill Rose is 19, Galchenyuk 21, Gallagher 22, Smith Pelly 22, Bolu 22, Pattern 24, Eller, Subban, Tokarski 25. So I think as good as they are right now in the standings, they're going to get better as this team moves forward. For sure they are. And, you know, those younger guys are going to mature. They're going to get better. It wasn't long ago we were talking about Subban, Pacioretty, uh, Ella coming up. These guys, you know, they're going to price. You know, they're going to start to mature and get better. It's the same with this group. And uh, you hope that uh, the veteran leadership in this room um, uh, shows them the way and works with them. And, and, you know, they do have a good good group of guys, good young guys, and there's a lot of promise in the future for this team. You look at the Tenorti being down the minus, you got McCarron, you know, they got some good draft picks, and Berge, Bergevin, he's sticking to his plan of, of building this team through the draft, and I, I like that. Go I ahead. would have to just add to that that I find, even though they're young, they just seem so mature that a lot of times you talk to these kids and they're kids, you know, you forget, you know, even Brendan Gallagher is one of them that really impresses me, that the way he you know, interacts with the media and just how comfortable he is and just the, the leadership that he's able to bring to some guys that are older than him and the respect that he's able to gain is not that common when you look at guys mm. at his age. And I think that's really the difference with this team, that they're young, but they're also very mature, which is a great sign for the Canadians. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back. Uh, Chris, among the young players at the Canadians, Jacob De La Rose has been the biggest surprise, I think. Is he a future number one center on this team? I don't know. I, I still think that's Galchenyuk, but boy, he's not a bad number two. He's a good size, and um, in the future, again, he, he's, he, he has a room at Terrian's house. I know that because <laughs> the coach really likes him, and that's a good thing. You know, this kid has confidence. The coach has confidence in him. Um, he certainly... Uh, it shows a lot of maturity beyond his years. I gotta, I can't believe how quick he's really acclimated to playing in this league at that position. We know it's not easy. We know Alex has had a problem with it. And here's a kid who comes in, and although his first couple games, I think he got shocked a little bit, got a couple goals scored against. He was like, oh. But he's bounced back. He's played well. Killing penalties, huge. Uh, shorthanded goal last night, but a great pass by Prust. And, um, you know, he had another opportunity shorthanded to score last night. So uh, there's good things coming from this kid. What shocks me is that he was able to do it even though he didn't get here till after the World Juniors, uh, well after. I think he, he didn't, like if he was playing at the level he is now, having started the season here in October, maybe you could understand it. He seemed to step right in there. Two games when he's back on his heels and boom, he's ready to go. Uh, I, I don't know what the offensive upside is as far as being a future Jean Beliveau or whatever, but for sure. Uh, but what I like so much about him is his hockey sense. You know, he yeah. knows where to go. He has the speed to go there, and I think that's what's so impressive that he's only 19 and already knows the game or understands that game already. Devontae smith Pelly is another young guy, but he's been, I think, a disappointment since he's come here, Chris. Yeah, a little bit. It, it, it always takes time to adjust, but I think the adjustment – that needs to be made with Devontae smith Pelly is uh, his weight. I think he's got to drop some weight, 220. He's not a real tall guy, right? Uh, I think if he drops some weight and he gets it down there, he's going to be quicker. He's going to have more endurance. He's going to be able to get there to provide the physical play the Canadians need from him. When you're a half step too late, it's not going to happen, especially in this league. And that's what he – sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. He's not in front of the net. I mean, you know, if it's still Gallagher who's the only one who's there at 180 pounds and not the 220-pounder. <laughs> well, the first thing I said to him, what was the biggest difference coming from the West Leagues? He said skating. <laughs> so I think now he's realizing <laughs> yeah. just how fast, especially on a team like the Montreal Canadiens, and that's probably going to be something that they're going to talk to him on the offseason to really get his speed and probably uh, drop some pounds as well. Now, Jessica, you're around the room. Have you noticed a change in the atmosphere since the trade deadline with all these new guys coming in? Well, a lot of the guys said that they felt that the team was very welcoming, that it could be intimidating, especially Devontae smith Pelly, a young guy, first time he got traded in the NHL to come to a new team. But I think especially the three guys coming from Buffalo and Edmonton, 
it's a second chance. You know, they were in such a dismal team. They knew their season was up in April. Now they have a second chance. They're coming to a team that's expected to be competitive in the playoffs. And uh, Tory Mitchell said that he's 30 years old. He's kind of on the other side of the career. And to win a Stanley Cup, he wants to be on a team that's competitive. And I'm pretty sure he looked around in Buffalo and said, there's no way I'm doing this anytime soon. Those guys from Buffalo and Edmonton, they would have been happy to go to Murmansk. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, on last week's show, you were saying that you wish they had kept Greg pattern well you got your wish he's back now he's back you know i think somewhere in that mix you need one stay at home physical defenseman you know they they were going for a long time with six puck moving guys which is fine pattern can do a little bit of both but i just find he has a presence out there i, I feel certain guys you feel confident when they're on the ice even young guys he's one del rose is one maybe it's just me but i feel good when pattern's on the ice they seem to have a fourth line going now, too, Chris, with uh, Malatro, Weiss, and Pruss. That was a fun line to watch against uh, Florida. It was, but again, you can't forget, um, you know, uh, how you got to the league. And that's the thing that happens with Dale Weiss sometimes. He gets up in the first line. He's done well. I like this kid. But once you forget your game, yeah, I mean, it, it, you just don't get it done anymore. And you're not providing the team with what they got you for. And uh, this fourth line with those three, it's looking solid. Now, Brandon pressed a game in Tampa. He ran Ben Bishop <laughs> yeah. behind the net. Uh, good Ooh. move, bad move. What was he thinking? Ooh. You can't do that. As soon as good he move. did that, good. I thought it was, oh, I did not like that move. Good move. They got to shake him up. They got to shake him up because that guy is so big. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if we're not coming to the day when guys like LeBron James are going to play goal, you know, six, <laughs> six foot nine. And I, I look at, at Bishop in the net and I say, where in the God's name are you going to go? There's there's nothing yeah. there. So that's one way to rattle him. I'm all in favor the of him. Mind big you, big. if it happened to Price, I would. Exactly. Yeah, we <laughs> all would have went nuts. But again, Brandon, Brandon Pruss let up when he hit him. He could have really ran him. He bumped him. They had a thing from last year. I don't have a problem with it. And I like the way he turned around and was just ready because they were coming. That's something but you might have done, Chris. Chris I, I love it. I did, tell, I did it. P. Peters in Boston, but I had O'Reilly and uh, Kluzak and Curran. I had they had like five guys on the ice that could fight, <laughs> and uh, I had ended up with O'Reilly. But um, you know, yeah, it's you know, oh, that's that's old time. <laughs> Everybody, it's old time hockey. Don't do that. Oh, stop. old time hockey. Brendan Gallagher is an old time player. He dropped the gloves against Tampa, and he did all right, Jack. Yeah, he does okay. You know, for a middleweight boxer, he didn't do bad. The other guy got in a couple of shots, and then he was Gallagher fighting a girl, though. Over. He was fighting Come a on. girl. It was a Valerie Bure. And yeah. what's wrong with fighting a girl? <laughs> well, you're not supposed to. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Lars Eller has also been playing a lot better recently. I'm thinking maybe the fact he wasn't trained. It seems like him and his wife really like Montreal. It might have been just a weight off his shoulders as far as staying here that's helping him. Yeah, maybe. I, I Again, Laz works his butt off. and It's just sometimes he, he's the hockey sense doesn't kick in. Uh, he doesn't have the hockey sense that some of the other guys on this team have. And that's where he gets in trouble. I don't have a problem with his work ethic. He always works his butt off. I like the way Laz shows up to play. He has some brain cramps now. Like You're in the room. How would you describe Lars as a guy? I think he's a very honest guy and very sincere and in this city it's a little bit more difficult because everything you say gets scrutinized that much more and maybe even taken out of context and I think he's sort of realized that he has to censor himself. I know he mentioned a few seasons ago that he sees a sports psychologist and that's something that really helps him and then of course everyone's doing stories on it and he's constantly talking about it and I think he got a little bit sick about talking about that side of things but he's someone that uh, I think really takes a lot of pride in what he does and when things are not going well you could see it on his face that it's really weighing on him. Chris, do you think the Canadians are going to finish first in the East? Um, yeah, I mean, they could. Who knows? Like, I, I don't know. I, I'm not good at making predictions. I just know this, that um, they need to beat Tampa Bay the next time they play them to, to get some confidence against them, to know that they can beat them, because if they see them in the playoffs, they're going to have problems. Uh, and, and they've got to stay on top down the stretch here. They know they're in the playoffs. They can't afford to uh, let games slip because that's what will happen. And when you let games slip and not get the points here at the end, you're going to drop. And before you know it, you could be in fourth spot or fifth spot. That's it for this week's show. We'll see you all again next week on Hockey Inside Out.